Have you ever received a call from an unknown number and it was from a sales agent and you got that call at the most inconvenient time? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to avoid that when you try to do some outreach to your potential prospects and clients and you could just leave them a voicemail in their voicemail box without the phone even ringing. I'm gonna show you how to automate this right now. All right, so we're gonna look at a bird's eye view of the entire scenario and don't worry, I'm gonna show you how to build this step by step, but let's just go over it right now. So the first piece that we use is Apollo.io. Apollo.io is our sales CRM where we can pull leads and pull prospects from all over the, all over the world for that matter um, into the system. Um, the next thing, once we get the, once the lead is pulled in, we're going to want to do some research on that lead and we're going to look at their social media, we're going to look at their website, we're going to look at everything that we can about that particular prospect so that way, that way we can formalize a customized voicemail for them. And once we have our research in place, we're going to use Anthropic Claude. Anthropic Claude is going to then use that research to formalize a, a voicemail script that we then send to Eleven Labs. Eleven Labs is our um, voice agent. So the, it's a it's an AI voice that's going to read the voicemail script and then f convert that into an audio file. We then take that audio file, drop it into Dropbox, and then we then retrieve it from Dropbox and put it into Slide Slide Broadcast. Slide Broadcast is the is the tool that we're going to use in order to drop that voicemail into that into into that uh, prospect's cell phone uh, ring list. Okay. And once, we, once we're done with that, we got to go back into Apollo and just clean everything up so that way we can restart the entire process again. All right. Um, if you are part of my online community, I'll have this flow already pre-made inside of the community where you can just hit the more button, hit import, and then this entire flow, this entire automation gets into your um, account. All you have to do, obviously, is connect your individual accounts to each of these programs. So your Apollo account, you can connect your perplexity account, your Claude account, et cetera. You'll just have to go into, go into each account, connect your account there, and then run the workflow, and then you'll be good to go, okay? But let's let's take a step back and let's look at each one of these um, programs so that we can understand how much it's gonna cost us and things of that nature, all right? So let's go, the first thing we need to look at is Make. Make is what we use to bring all of the software, all of the components together. This is what we use to build our workflows, um, similar to, it's similar to um, Zapier, but this is a lot better. It's a lot better visually. Um, it's free to it's free to join. Um, and again, everything that I discussed today is going to be in the show notes, so you can just click on click on those links, and then you'll be able to have access to all of these programs. And everything that I'm going to discuss today is fairly is free for the most part. Um, but then you just have, may have to add for some of the AI tools. You're going to have to add some money on the account, so that way it's a pay per usage type of deal okay so with make it's free to use it's free to join you have a thousand um operations per month with a free account um, you click to get started you sign up for the account and then you're able to create some automation so if this is the only automation you want to do you should, it should be free to use okay and um the next piece that we're going to use is we, we are going to use apollo.io uh apollo.io again is our sales is the sales crm that i use um, they have a database of 20, 275 million contacts and, and 73 million companies throughout the world. So the person that you're looking for to do business with is going to be listed on a pile Apollo.io and their information is pretty much going to be stored here. Okay. So for in the, in, in the, like every title agent agent is going to be on here. Every title agency is going to be on here throughout the, throughout the nation. And, uh, you'll be able to find that person as far as pricing, um, Apollo.io is also, um, let's go on to pricing. Uh, the, there is a free account that allows you to pull five mobile numbers a month. So if you just want to test this out, you can sign up for their free account and then you could pull five, um, five mobile numbers from five different prospects. But once you want to really go all in on this, you might want to update up, upgrade to their basic or professional plan. Um, so that way you can automate this and pull these every day for that matter. Okay. The next piece that we use is perplexity that AI perplexity that AI is also free. Uh, once you sign in, the only thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to um, load money on here. I believe it was $10 initially to load. And then you can have set a replenishment amount for about $5 or so. Uh, so that way you can have credits. But once you click on this API tab, I'm 
my if I click on it, you'll see my API key and I'm just trying to keep that private. But once you click on this API um, tab, you'll be able to add money and then they'll, they'll give you what's called an API key. And that's how you can connect um, perplexity to me. OK, the next piece that we use is called Claude. Claude that AI is uh, uh, Claude is um, through Anthropic. Um, so once you connect to Claude, again, you're going to have to go into your settings and then you're going to have to um, add um, some credits on here. So that way you can, um, so that way you can um, get an API key and again, connect that to um, make.com. Um, Claude is similar to chat GPT, um, but in my, in my, in my um, opinion, Claude is actually good when you try to create personalized messages. Um, and I, I, I find that, and I'm actually going to do another video on a new Claude um, Sonnet 3.5 that they just came out with. That's actually pretty good. Um, it's not, you can't automate it yet because it's so new. It came out a few days ago, the, the, new, the new version, but it compares to uh, GPT 4.0, which came out about a month ago or so. Um, AI is moving so fast and all these platforms are trying to compete with each other. And that's good for us because then we get to take advantage of these, uh, this, this, this robust technology. But, um, for this automation, we're using Claude and, um, you just need to add credits on here. <laughs> okay. The next piece, our voice agent, 11 labs, 11 labs is if we just go back here, 11 labs is a voice, a generative voice AI tool, um, that allows you to speak in multiple languages. And it also allows for you to convert text into audio. Okay. So in this particular case, we're going to uh, formulate, uh, we're going to formulate a, a voicemail script, a customized voicemail script based on the research that we found about the prospect. And then we're going to convert that using 11 labs to, um, a voice agent. Um, once you sign up for 11 labs, 11 labs is free to join. Um, and you get, uh, 10,000 characters per month on the free account. And it also has API access, which is great because that's what we need in order to connect, um, 11 labs to meek.com and then we can um then formalize that voicemail script to a message and it's pretty neat uh, i talked i spoke about 11 labs on one of my other videos but then you can go into 11 labs and you can actually set up your own voice if you want on 11 labs so that way uh when they when you leave a, a voicemail it'll sound like you so that way when a person calls back um, you, uh, they'll, they'll sound like you, the one that left the voicemail, which is mind blowing. The next piece that we need is Dropbox, or you don't even have to use Dropbox. You can, if you have any storage, if you have box, um, but I found that after my testing, Dropbox was the best one to use out of all of them. And the one, once you get to build any automation, I'll show you exactly why we used uh, Dropbox, but Dropbox is free to use, um, with the free account you get two gig two gigs of storage with the, the basic account you get two gigs of storage and it also allows for api access as well so that's really all you need um for me i have a i have the plus account because i have a bunch of data data on on um dropbox but for you the basic account will be good enough for this automation last piece that we need right is the ringless voicemail sky sky broadcast sky Pro broadcast allows you to leave ringless voicemails. Okay. Um, so then that's what we need. So once we have the voicemail message, that was the customized voicemail message. We want to take that voicemail message and we want to drop it onto the, onto the prospect's phone. So that way, when they check their voicemail message, you'll have a voicemail from you that's advertising your services. And then you can leave whatever type of, um, call to action you like on that point. All right. So now let's get into creating the automation. All right. So the first thing we need to do is when we, when we create a scenario on make is we need to set up a trigger. And in this particular case, Apollo.io is going to be our trigger to set this entire workflow and this entire automation up. So the first thing we need to do actually, before we start to create this automation is we have to do a little bit of prep in Apollo.io. Okay. So let's jump over to Apollo.io. Assumption is you've created your account already. Once you create your account, the first thing you need to do is you need to go to search and then you need to create two lists. Okay. Um, you go to the save list and in order to create a list, um, you just hit new list and then you just create the name. Now, in my particular case, I created voicemail drop 
or VM drop or you however you want to call it and you want to call it and then you want the next one you want to create is um, VM drop completed or a some kind of indication as to after you left the voicemail you want to take it out of this list and move it into a new list okay and then you can build upon the automation later on it's just this is om this is almost like we are prepping again so like a follow-up after we leave a voicemail we can do another automation that um that we can continue off where we left or that we can continue prospecting to that same lead afterwards after we leave the voicemail drop okay so we're just going to do voicemail drop and the second one we're going to do um or vm drop and the second one we do vm completed all right so let's go back into search um and then what we want to do is we want to send people to that list so say for example we want to search for uh title agents right so what we can do is we can go to job titles and we can select uh title let's see title officer right that's one let's see title who else title maybe title processor um is another then we could say title agent right that's another and what what else what else are title agents called they're called maybe escrow officer right escrow officer right um that's one escrow assistant maybe escrow assistant is another one uh what's, what's another one settlement right so settlement officer oh let's see uh settlement officer um those are like general titles but maybe mm, maybe title settlement escrow manager maybe yes escrow manager all right so those are some titles out of these titles we should find the person that we're looking for and let's see out of all of this apollo found twenty seven thousand people in their database that match these uh titles right but say you're based in say you're based in a different state like say what state we're based in let's go to the change the location and let's say we want to find someone in florida i'll let you florida let's, let's find a florida man <laughs> let's go to florida florida us so from twenty seven thousand it's going to ch change it to 1,500. So these are 1,500 in Florida. And you can go to city, state, zip. If you want to drill the down a little bit more, you could do that. All right. Um, so this is a good starting point. Uh, we don't necessarily care about emails in this particular scenario because what we're doing is we're just looking for our cell phone numbers. So the only thing is a cost with the pilot IO, it costs to pull cell phone numbers. Okay. So let's say, for example, um, um, Lynn Tillman, let's say access mobile number is going to cost me one credit. So then we find the phone number is looking for the cell phone number. Hopefully find something, uh, while it looks for that one, let's look for another one. Let's see. Um, oh, this one has a number already, which is good. So we don't have to find anyone here, uh, direct dial. Oh, we still have to pull it. So let's say request direct dial. Uh, let's see if it finds anything with verifying the direct dial. Good. So that's what I wanted to, to show. So when you pull in, when you pull these, um, it's going to automatically search the do not this do not call list. And if it's on a do not call list, technically you're not supposed to text them either. I know it's not, we're not technically calling them. Well, actually the system is calling them and it's leaving a voicemail. So it's against, it's against the law really to, um, communicate with these people via phone. But they're on the do not call list. Um, I'm using Apollo.io to to search for to search for um, prospects. But you may have a list that you already can already have in place that you want to drop voicemails for. You can use that list as well, and you could upload it to Apollo, and you can save it to a list, and you can do that as well. Um, but I'm doing this as is as if it's a cold lead that you're trying to to prospect and find people for. So. So Kimberly is not a good one. So there, um, Paulo's still searching for a cell phone for this person. Let's see if we find another, um, prospect. Let's see. Um, let's see Wendy. Let's look at Wendy. Let's see if we could access a phone number. Um, okay. So we got Wendy. Let's see. They're verifying the direct dial and let's see if anyone could be do not call. So I'm just trying to find a prospect. That'll be, that'll be good for us to to use as an example. So let's see, access the mobile number. I'm used to using a bunch of my credits just to see if we pull up, who we could pull up. All right, so let's see, we got Meg. Let's verify her number. Let's see Gloria, oops. 
category up. Verifying that numbers. So it's verifying, verifying, it's verifying these numbers for these different prospects. Let's see. All right, let's see if I can find one. I wish there was a way that you can um, filter this so that way we can find phone numbers who are not on the do not do not call list. Fortunately, we cannot. We have to go by them one by one. But we can do it in bulk. I mean, we could uh, like um, select the maximum select the maximum of people. Uh, apply the selection and then we can go in here and we can um, uh, let's see go here let's see sorry so I guess we can't do it in bulk we have to do one by one I know we could do it with the emails so we can um, find the emails in bulk but alright so we can just go, to, go by this one by one and let's see if we find anyone anyone that's on the do not do not call list verify the numbers all right so while it's verifying the numbers there is one more piece that we need to do okay so let's uh let's just save this search uh we're just gonna call it um title uh florida oh. for the title agents okay all right, so while this is still searching, what we want to do is we want to actually go to settings. And what we want to do next is we want to tag these people, right? So if we go to contacts, not tag, I'm sorry. What we want to do is we want to create a, a stage. So if you go again, we go to settings and you go to objects and then you hit on contacts. Once you go there, uh, it'll allow you to, to customize the stages. I created a stage called uh, voicemail drop on the bottom here. You can call it whatever you like, but uh, what we, I'm going to show you what we need to do later, um, because in order to activate our trigger, we're going to want to create this stage. OK, so let's just go back into our search and let's see if Apollo was able to um, verify any of these uh, mobile numbers yet. Uh, so this one is on the do not call. This one didn't find a number. Oh, so let's see. So let's, let's go to people that, that already have numbers. Um, uh, let's see. Let's just request some additional numbers here. Let's see. Okay, so we got one. Other people don't do not call this, right? So that's one thing that we have to be mindful of that people are on a do not call list, and we would need to find people that who's not on a do not call list. Okay, so we got one. Oh, yep. So the mobile number for Miranda. So we'll take Miranda. She's our guinea pig for today. No offense, Miranda, if you ever see this video. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do is with Miranda, we want to take Miranda and we want to add to the list. All right, so we're going to add to a list and the list we want to add her to is the VM drop list, right? Let's add to the list, Miranda. Okay, and let's see, um, who else? Can we, let's see if we can find one more just for, let's see, request this one. Let's see if we find anyone out. Oh, we got another one. Uh, Rendy, hopefully I pronounced that correct. All right, we'll add um, Rendy also over to the um, we'll over to a list. Oh, sorry, right here, add to list. Um, we gotta add to the voicemail drop list, right? All right, so that's two. So you have to go through this exercise, add people to the list that you want to prospect to, and and go from there. One thing I didn't do that I normally like to do, what you may want to do on your list is you may want to go to the employee count and you may want to change this to however you want. Because if you, I don't know if you want to communicate with, with companies that have 10,000 employees, it may be hard to get through to them as far as using your services. Um, but I usually, I, I've found the best success with finding companies that's under a hundred employees. But they're, they're like mid, small to mid-sized uh, title agencies and they can um, work with you a little better. But if you're like a national signing service, you may want to go after larger clients, but I guess to get started, you may want to go after the smaller clients. And this went from a thousand, over a thousand to like a little, uh, like about 900 um, prospects. So 
um, that should work for us. But all right, so now let's go back to the save list and let's look at who we have here. Let's go to voicemail drop and we'll see the we'll see the we'll see the prospects that we added to to VM drop here. All right, so um, again, I have like three people here. I have one from Pennsylvania, but um, Miranda and Randy is what we added. And then we can even see the number of employees, 13 and 11. So they've kind of fit to the prospects I like, to, the people I like to prospect to. All right, so let's go back into the automation. So now that we have our um, stage, and if you notice uh, this, the contact stage is here, what we want to do is, all right, so let's build this automation. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to add Apollo here. Once we add Apollo, what we want to do is we want to list contacts. And once we click on list contacts, we want to go down to voicemail drop. Okay. The voicemail drop is the stage. So once we hit okay, um, it's going to pull that. So if we hit this right now, it may not run because what we need to do is we need to add the stage. So Gina was one of my test accounts, but what we need to do next is we need to go back into Apollo and we need to change the stage. So let's go to, um, um, let's say, um, uh, Miranda will change it from our responsive stage, right? We'll change it from our responsive stage and we'll go down to voicemail drop stage because this is the trigger that Meek is looking for in order to pull the elite into me. Okay. So now if we run this again, it should pull in. Oh, it might take a while. Let's run this module again. Let's see. Oh, there it is right here. Miranda, Miranda McQueen. Okay. And what I want to do is to, just to keep everything clean. If we go back into save list, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete what I completed before and uh, remove the stage off of Gina. The shoes on my test account that I did before the scenario. Uh, let's just move this and hit save. Right. So no stage. Boom. All right. So if we go back here and we run this module again, it should pull. It may take, a, may take a, a few minutes to process. But if we run this module only, it should pull Miranda only, right? Great. Perfect. So now we got Miranda real clean. All right. So the next thing we need to do is we need to do some research on Miranda, right? So if we hit this plus button and then we hit on perplexity AI, we got to create a chat completion and, um, what we want to do is we want to do two parts. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to, um, add a, a role, a system role. So the system role is basically going to be the command that we want to give perplexity and to cheat. I'm going to just copy off of the scenario that I have copy the code and then I'll uh, break it everything now to you. Okay. So the, the content is, uh, the content that we want to use for the system is say you are, re you are a research bot. Your role is to find as much relevant information about the person as possible, about a person as possible. I need you to research the person's job history, school history, awards and achievements and hobbies. Okay. So that way we can create a, we can create a customized, a customized, uh, voicemail message. Okay. Um, all right. And the next thing we need to do is we need to also add, um, a user. Okay. So this is, this is the, this is the, this is, these are the, um, the variables that we need to add in order for perplexity to start doing their research. So let's just copy this here as well. And we are going to add everything here. Okay. So let's go into this here. All right. We're going to close everything out here. All right. Got it. Come on. All right. Perfect. So the person's name. All right. So if we hit name, Brenda, their title, um, licensed escrow officer, their email. All right. Um, the reason I'm putting the email in here is because when, um, perplexity is doing their research, I want them to match their email address to the right person. Cause they could be multiple people named Miranda McLean. And I don't want them to, I don't want perplexity to find someone else that would that mean, and they give us information on the wrong person. So email usually kind of narrows that down, right? So let's look for email. All right. The email, let's see if I can find it is right here. Miranda. All right. The organization name is, um, let's find it here. It's got here. Organization name. What's the name of the company? Organization name is right there. 
organization URL. Is there the company's website? Let's find it here. Um, and then LinkedIn. Let's find it. We got the LinkedIn URL. Let's see if they have any Twitter. Does she have any Twitter? She doesn't, but I'm still going to put that there. Facebook URL, Facebook. And that's it. So this is the social media. So LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. If they have any accounts, actually is going to check those accounts for their information. They got to check their company name, the company's website. They got to also check their company they work for. And that should be enough information to get us rolling. Okay. Let's hit okay. And let's run a scenario. Okay. So we got to run a scenario. Now, Perplexity AI is going to do their research and find what they found, find what they found on Miranda. So let's see what was found. Okay. So if we go back into uh, choices and then we go to hit plus one and then we hit the messages, content, let's find it and see what they found. All right. So here's the information about Miranda. They didn't find much. They found what school she went to, Wichita State University. She had no awards, no hobbies. Uh, and they didn't find much information about her. Okay. Um, this is as much information as they were found. So as whatever, whatever was found out, I did, I did find that it was a little bit fast. It did go a little fast, but one thing that they found about um, Miranda is uh, her school. Okay. All right. So that's, we have to use what we, what we, what we, what we got. And then the best practices is we need to, um, we need to, um, um, label this module. So let's rename this. We are going to name this research. Okay. And let's give it an emoji. All right. This is our research bot. All right. All right. So after we found the research, the next thing we need to do is we need to use um, Anthropic, Anthropic Claude. So we go to Claude. Um, Claude AI, we got to create, we got to create a message. Ooh, what's going on here? Delete this and let's try it again. Anthropic Claude, create a message. There we go. That was a... Uh, a little glitch in the matrix. All right. So we're going to use the model. The model we're going to use is called um, three um, opus. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a new version that's coming out or that's out already, but it's not part of um, the API yet. Uh, it's 3.5 Sonnet and 3.5 Sonnet is amazing. And I'm going to um, put a link somewhere in this video um, about the 3.5 Sonnet that I'm going to create, but it's amazing technology it allows you to just it competes, it, it competes and it's actually the numbers show that they are a lot better than um, GPT 4.0 or the open AI 4.0. A little coffee, sorry. And um, yeah, I'll show you that in another video. So the side topic. All right. So we're going to use the opus in this one and the max tokens we're going to use is a thousand max tokens and let's create a message. Okay. So the role is going to be user and the content is going to be text and then the text that we go to type and then let me just uh cheat here a little bit and then we'll go through this scenario together okay uh, let's close this and let's zoom in a little bit. hopefully show this to you hopefully you can see my screen here all right so listen i just wrote that you're an expert message messaging assistant your role is to draft a customized script for a voicemail message on behalf of 24 7 closures which is my company but you may want to change this to your company all right, uh, not me, but you should change your company. <laughs> um, um, the sender, the sender's information specifically, uh, the specific pain point is difficulty in ensuring timely notary assignments. Uh, it says your name, um, your name is Emily. All right, so I put the, your name. So your name is the person that you're calling about. So if it's your name, your name could be your name, right? But um, Emily is going to be my voice assistant. That's going to be making the calls on my behalf for my company. And it's the, the phone number. And then you want to put your unique selling proposition. So my unique selling proposition for my company is that we guarantee that a notary, we can, we can book a notary for you within five minutes. So you got to kind of think about your unique selling proposition for your prospects. What makes you different from everyone else? And you're going to want to put that here. Okay. Um, the recipient's information, I say use the following research to retrieve the recipient's information as well as contextualize the voicemail message. Okay. So in this particular case, um, the content that we're going to get is the, um, um, the research that we found, right? So the research that we found is here. So if we go to choices and we go into messages and then we go into content, right? 
So this is the content that we found. So I'm telling it to use the research that we found um, from the research bot in order to get the information that you need for the particular prospect that we, that the particular person that we prospect into. Uh, the crucial information, um, I'll put the voicemail script on only nothing else because I noticed in my research that it was saying, hey, this is what we did for you. And it would leave that in the voicemail script. So I mean, I'm um, trying to like beat it on the head. So all I need is the voicemail script, nothing else. Okay. And I gave it some example. I gave it example outputs and example. I gave it an example input and example output here. Um, and then um, you can customize this to your to your liking as well. Okay. Uh, hit okay. And again, we just need to rename this. We'll call it voicemail script. A VM script. And let's go with an emoji here. Let's give it a. This is the brains, right? Perfect. All right, perfect. So after we have the voicemail script, let's actually, let's run this, okay? So let's run it once and let's see what comes up. Okay. So now the voicemail bot ran and now uh, Anthropic is going to take that voicemail script, is gonna take that research and it's gonna create a voicemail script, okay? Once the voicemail script is complete, then we could take that voicemail script and then we can um, actually create a voice behind it. Okay. Hopefully everything is okay with Anthropic. I noticed when I um, started the scenario that it gave me a spit, it spit out an error. So this, this, this pros and cons using Anthropic. Anthropic is good when you want to create something personalized, but when um, as far as the the CPU and the, 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 the bandwidth behind Anthropic is a little bit, it's not as good as OpenAI. If OpenAI's backend is very strong, um, but um, I like I like Anthropic. I like Anthropic in how they customize, how they customize their messages. So hopefully when this finishes, hopefully soon, which is taking a little bit longer than I would like, um, we'll get to see the, the script that it completed, okay? All right, so while this runs, let's actually move on, okay? So I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen next. So after the voicemail script is created, we're gonna throw, we throw it in 11 labs. So once you sign up for 11 labs, again, you can sign up for 11 labs for free, um, and you get a certain amount of um, usage. Um, but once you sign up for 11 labs, you, you, you can select what voice you like, okay? And they have a ton of different voice voices you can use you can add your own voice here so like on the my voices you can go you could do what's called a generative um voice clone i created my own voice voice clone and they have two different type of voice clones you can create the first the first one is just um you give it like one or two samples of your voice and it'll automatically create that voice for you or you can give it like an hour or two hours of, of your voice or videos of your voice and and um, 11 labs will do a, a pretty good job at getting your voice down to like almost sounding exactly like you pick up your accents your tonalities things like that um but i did a, a, a instant voice where i just gave it like two samples of my voice and it was, it was it was okay it wasn't my voice but it was it was pretty decent to get by so if you want to use that for your like an instant voice to leave your voicemail messages you can um and when a person calls you back it'll sound similar enough to you okay um so if i hit use and i just say hello this is a test and I say, uh, generate speech. Hello. This is a test. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that. Hello. This is a test. Oops. I didn't have my volume up. Hello. This is a test. So this, this is sound like me, but if we create it again, like if we do it, generate it again, hello, this is a test. It sounded a little different than the first time. So this is not completely accurate as my voice, but it would be good enough to leave a voicemail. Right. If I wanted to leave a voicemail message so that way when a person calls me back, it'll, it'll sound like me. But what you want to do is you want to go to the different voices and you're going to want to find a voice that you would like to use for your voicemail message. You can even phrase it or coin it so that way you, the person that's calling is like your assistant um, that's calling on your behalf. So you can leave, you can create a script that says, hey, I'm calling on behalf of the office of Aaron Notary Services. Um, it's calling to introduce what I can do, blah, 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 blah. You can create a script like that for yourself. Okay, so I just wanted to show that to you before we go to the next step. All right, so let's go back here and Anthropic is still running. So something is not right, because usually um, 
scenarios run pretty fast. So um, it's letting me know that is an issue with Anthropic AI. Um, that's um, not good. <laughs> so hopefully we can get through this uh, scenario today. All right. So I'll come back once it's done. Okay. So Anthropic created the voicemail script. Let's take a look at it right now. Okay, so if we look at the script, let's just go here to the text response. All right, it says, hey, Miranda, this is Emily with 24 seven closers. I hope you're having a great day. As a licensed escrow officer, title agency at Covenant Closings and Title Services, I understand the importance of meeting closings, deadlines, closing, sorry, closing date deadlines and delivering superior customer service. However, I've also known that ensuring timely notary assignments can be a significant challenge in the fast paced industry. At 24 seven closures, we specialize in providing reliable and efficient notary services. We guarantee a notary will be assigned within five minutes of your request or the signing is complimentary. Our goal is to help you streamline your closing processes and maintain positive relationships with your clients. If you'd like to learn more about how we can support you and your team, please don't hesitate to reach out. I look forward to the opportunity to serving you and Covenant Closing Title Services soon. Best regards. Awesome. So I created a contextualized voicemail message for the prospect. And now what we can do is we can build upon it. As I just recently showed with 11 labs, you can go in and you can take that voice message and convert it into an audio message. Okay. So let's do that. So uh, let's go to 11 labs. Oops. I can spell 11, 11 labs. And again, everything that you add here, um, the first time that you log in, you will receive a prompt. The first time that you connect this module to make, you'll, re you'll receive a prompt that's going to um, um, ask you to connect to that specific program. Some cases it's just a login, a username and password. Other cases you may need to enter the um, the API key, as I mentioned um, during a tutorial or earlier. So here, what you want to do is you want to select the voice. So it has all the voices that was listed before, um, and as I mentioned, um, my voice is here if I wanted to use my own voice. But in this this particular case, I created a professional. I use one of the professional voices. Um, the name uh, is Hope. So that's what I'm going to use. And then what we want to do is we want to scroll down to 11 turbo version two and the text, what we want to use is the text that we got from Anthropic, right? From Claude. So we're going to use that text response and then everything else you can leave blank. We'll hit okay here. And then what we want to do is we want to, um, we, if we, we can run the scenario again, but if we run the scenario, it'll be a little bit difficult for us to listen to the voicemail. So I'm going to um, show you that in the next step. But what we want to do next is we want to keep it best practices and we want to label our module. So let's rename it and we'll call it, uh, let's generate, uh, generate a voicemail, right? And let's give it an emoji. Let's see. Okay, good. We're speaking out loud, blowing smoke. Uh, let's do it again. Uh, go here. Okay, hit okay. Good, good, good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is once we have, this is going to generate a voice mail message file. Um, I wish there was a way that we can get the voicemail directly from here and put it into the to, to, to slide broadcast, but best practice is we have to put it somewhere to store it. Um, even within make, you could store it within make, within make as well. They have like database components, but I think the best practice for us for this, for this example, we'll just use a, a Dropbox. So if you have, I've, I've tried it with box.com and it didn't work as, as I wanted it to. Um, I tried it with other storage platforms. It didn't work, but box was one of the best ones that I found and that's free for you to use as well. So we get to just go with box. I'm sorry, Dropbox. Let's go to Dropbox. And what we want to do is we want to upload a file. Okay. Um, we got to upload a file. We could choose a folder. I created a specific folder within Dropbox called uh, VM drops, or you can, you know, name it however you like. And um, once we um, put it to the folder VM drops, it's going to automatically sync with the 11 labs uh, download. What we have to do here is hit okay. 
And what we're gonna do is rename this again. Let's rename it. We gotta call it uh, store um, store VM message. Oops. And then let's just give it an emoji. Let's give it a, a storage basket. Cool. All right. Awesome. All right. So once we do that, we can do this. So let's go to log into my Dropbox account so that we can take a look at it. Okay. Let's log into Dropbox. And um, once we log into Dropbox, I'm going to go to that folder so that way we can play the message. Okay. All right, let's go here and let's go to have a bunch of folders here, but let's go to uh, VM drop and let's go here. All right, so let's do this. Let's run a scenario and let's then we'll be able to play the voicemail message. Okay. Hopefully everything runs good because for t for some reason today, Anthropic and it hasn't been running as fully as I would have liked it. Okay, we ran good this time. Now let's go to 11 labs. Let's go to generate the voicemail message. And now we got to throw that voicemail message in Dropbox. So if we go to Dropbox, we should see the new message that just came in. 3.47 PM. And let's play it. Hopefully you can hear it. Hi, Miranda. This is Emily from 24-7 Closers. I hope you're having a great day. As a licensed escrow officer at Covet the Closing and Title Services, I understand that ensuring timely notary assignments can be a significant challenge while maintaining your commitment to providing superior customer service and meeting closing date deadlines. At 24-7 Closers, we specialize in providing fast and reliable notary services. Guarantee a notary will be assigned within five minutes or the signing is complimentary. If you'd like to learn more about how we can help streamline your closing process and support your efforts to maintain positive relationships with your clients, please don't hesitate to contact us at 888-915-1944. Looking forward to the opportunity to serve you and your team soon. Take care. Awesome. All right. So you see that 11 Labs took that voicemail message. And if we want to look at the voicemail message here, it's exactly what was um, stated. Um, on the text response, this is exactly what uh, we, we sent over to 11 Labs, and it said it contextualizes. So it said the person's name, their company name, um, and if it had any other personal information, we'll add it here as well. Okay. Uh, I've seen scenarios where it, it, it spoke about their achievements and things like that. So it makes it very, very personal, and this is per, per lead. Okay. So once we have this, what we need to do in order to drop this message into the person's uh, voice um, mail, we need to create a link. So, and that's where I ran into a problem before after a lot of testing and that where Dropbox is really good at this. So, uh, on the, if you go reload the Dropbox, Dropbox module again, what we can do is we can create a link. So let me just do a search a link and what it'll create a, a create a shared link. Okay. So once we create the share link, um, we need to, um, select the, select the folder. Um, the folder again we chose was the VM um, Dropbox or VM VM Drop. Where is it? Sorry, I have a bunch of I have a bunch of things going on here. Let's just search the VM Come on, VM Drop. And then what we're going to do is we want to add. Let's actually you have to map it. What we're looking for in VM Drop is we're looking for the actual file name. Okay, so the file name is going to be right here. Okay, that's the file name. All right. And then what we want to do is we want to give this max access so that the person um, has the max access um, as far as um, the link expiration. We don't need to we can keep that empty. Um, as far as the password requirements, we're going to say uh, no password requirements. OK. Um, the next thing as far as the password, we can leave that blank because we're not doing any passwords here or there's not any password allow download. We want to select yes, because that's the, that's what we need to do is we need to be able to download the file off of Dropbox into me. Okay. And then that's really all the settings, all the settings that we need. Let me just, uh, hit okay. And let's just rename this. We got to rename this to, um, what could we name it to? Let's just call it, uh, get a URL. All right. So it's VM voicemail URL. 
All right? So let's see. All right, get the link, hit OK, and that's gonna give us the link. So to save more time, let's go to the next step. The next step, what we need to do next is we need to actually drop the voicemail. So we're using a Sly, Sly Broadcast. Sly Broadcast, and what we wanna do is we want to send a campaign with an audio URL. I tried it with the file, and if we want to take a peek, a quick look, it doesn't it doesn't sync well with um, getting like the file name and date it, it, and the data. It, it didn't work well with that, so that's why I didn't use that. So we'll we'll delete this, and what we want to do is we want to actually use the URL instead. That's why we created the URL link here. So we'll say send a campaign with an audio URL. Okay. All right. So what we want to do here is the date. Um, we want to send it right away. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to send it at a later date, you can do that as well. Well, being that we got to use a scenario and we want to have it automated, automated, and we really want our trigger to be with Apollo, so that when we set the, um, when we set the, what do we set again? We set the, um, the what you call it, the stage, right? The stage I did a voicemail drop. Once we set that stage. Um, we want it to automatically trigger this. So what we want to do is we want to send this text message. You want to send that text message. We want to send this voicemail drop. We want to send it now. So within make, uh, you can have time variables. So if you click on this and we click on the actual um, um, calendar icon, we get to select now. And what it'll do is as soon as it gets, it, it, as soon as the trigger hits, it'll automatically send it right now. So it'll tell, it'll tell Fly Broadcast to send this text message right now. The URL, the URL that we need, we'll go back here, hit the star. And what we want to do is we want to say download URL. So if we can find that here under here, download URL. This is the URL that we needed that's produced. And the phone number is you want to put a phone number here. Um, this phone number actually is going to be the phone number of the prospect. Okay. So we let's just minimize everything. Um, collapse all and then we want to go to uh, Apollo and we want to select the phone number for the prospect okay so it will be their um, vocal number and that usually is uh, their sanitized number this is the number the sanitized number according to um, Apollo is the number that we we pulled and we had and we had um, Apollo look at and make sure that it was not a do not call list but we could actually you should be able to expand on it a little bit more i know for a fact that it's the sanitized number but usually if you want to expand on it a little bit more there is usually the primary phone it's the phone number sanitized number so this is the number here but i'm trying to there is, if we expand on this a little bit more, we can find where it states whether it's, if the if that number is on a do not call list. I've not seen it before. It just it just it's just escaping me right now. But maybe it's under here. No, sanitized number. So what we'll do is we'll just use the sanitized number, and we'll we'll enter that here. Okay. Um, this is what we want to do here, but we don't want to actually send them a text message. But I'll, I'll put my my phone number here for the test so that we can test it. The caller ID. Uh, all right. So this number is a number that you want them to be able to call you back on. So you will want to put a number here that uh, is a number that you are going to pick up. So if they call you back, you're going to want to pick up on that number. It should be a mobile number as well. So that way, if they do decide to text you on the number, instead of calling you back, you can receive text messages on this number. Uh, in another video that I've completed, I, I showed you how to do an automatic or uh, AI phone receptionist. So that's something that we can do. And that's the number that I'm going to use in this case. So that way, if they call back, that it'll automatically have somebody that picks up. And in this case, it's not somebody, it's an AI receptionist that's going to be able to answer their questions. Okay. So, and I'll leave, I'll leave a link to that video in this description somewhere. Okay. Um, so I'm going to leave my number here. It's 888 5 1944 okay and we will say mobile only and the the file format is going to be dot mp3 all right 
We don't need to worry about list. And again, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do in your scenario. So that way it says attack directly to the person, but I'm gonna change this to my number, okay? Good, so we are good to go to, to run the test. So I'm gonna run the test now and it's gonna leave a voicemail message on my phone, which usually takes about five five minutes or so to, to show up. But what I could do is let's go, let's log into slide broadcast. All right, we're gonna like to slide broadcast. I'm gonna log in here and I wanna show you um, that it's running. Okay, let's close this. And these are two that I've completed before. I'm gonna, it's gonna refresh once it's done and it's gonna show you. Um, I'll show you what happens. Okay, so let's hang tight. Okay, so right now it's generating, generating the voicemail message. And let's see what script that they come up with this time. Should be similar. Hi, Miranda. This is um, Emily for 24 seven close. I hope you're having a great day. As a licensed escrow officer, at Covenant closes its title services. I know that ensuring timely notary assignments can be a significant challenge. Okay. So I left that message. Uh, now I generated the voicemail message. Okay. After it generates the voicemail message, then it should, um, drop that message into um, Dropbox. Yeah, I've noticed that make has been a little delayed today. It's been a little delayed. So let's just give it a little bit, give it a few more minutes and then we should hopefully see everything go through. Okay, let's see. Okay, so it, it's just not syncing right. So it did leave the voicemail message. This is the new one that just left at 357. And then we should also see it create the URL and Let's see, we'll know once it's done, once this so see slide is running. So like, it's just a, so make is having a little delay right now. So I can see on the back end that these processes are, it did run, but it's just not showing on my interface that it's, that it's, that it's ran, okay? Um, so it's just a little slight delay here. All right, so, um, so the scenario, so it ran successfully. Um, so I finally was able to receive the, the voicemail message um, i don't know if you can see it on my phone is a little bit a little bit hard to see but i have a, a missed voicemail call okay a missed call and, and the person left a voicemail all right so if i go and click on that and let's see if i can hit play hi Miranda. this is emily from 24 7 closers and i hope you're having a great day and a licensed escrow officer at covenant closing and title services I know that ensuring timely notary assignments can be a significant challenge in maintaining a smooth closing process. At 24 7 closers. All right, so I'm not going to put in a full thing, but you can see that it worked, right? So it left me uh, it, within about like four to five minutes. Um, I saw a missed call on my phone. And then when I got to the voicemail, I have a voicemail message from what we automated, okay? So as you can see, the scenario is working. Make has given us a little bit of problems today. It could be a little bit of overload, overkill there, but uh, usually everything works pretty smoothly. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to just fine tune this automation so that once we leave a voicemail message, a voicemail um, message on the, on the, on the prospect uh, phone, we can then move them to another list so that way we don't send them multiple voicemail messages, okay? So the first thing we need to do is we need to um, go back into Apollo and we just need to uh, move the contact to another list. So what we want to do is just say update. Uh, we want to update the contact. And when, once we update the contact, what we need to do at that point is we need to get the contact ID. So the contact ID we're going to retrieve from our original trigger. The original trigger is going to have the contact ID here. So that way we are going to move the correct contact. Okay. And remember early when we created um, um, the different list. So what we want to do here, you know, and I think the, if Apollo ever sees this video or someone at Make ever sees this video, we need to improve, they need to improve on how it, everything is labeled because it's, it's it's called labels here, but it's actually a list. Okay, it's actually a list in Apollo and they call it label. So that took me a while to figure out. Um, but then I was able to figure out what they meant when they call it label. So label is actually a list, right? Um, so we got to say it's VM drop completed. I believe what I what I call it. So if we go back to Apollo, 
and we go back to um, save lists. Uh, VM job completed is what I called it, right? So I'm um, sorry, we don't need to apologize. Wrong tab. VM job completed. All right, so that's what we need to do is we need to move it there. Okay. Um, and we hit OK. All right. So what is what is what is it going to do? Is going to let's rename it. We are moving. Oops, sorry. We need to um, rename it. Move to completed um, VM list. All right. And let's just give it a emoji and go here. Okay. Another thing we need to do is for safe for safekeeping. What we can do is not allow anything to get past this list if they are not um, if they are not in the um, in this list. So if they're not in if they're not in this list VM drop list, then we don't want them. We don't even want the trigger to consider moving that person over. Okay. Because what I've noticed is if what I've noticed with make is that if there's no way or I'm still trying to figure out a way to um, if you know the, the contact stage, there's no way for, for me to get them off the contact stage and automate this. And, I, and I'm still trying to figure this out. So what I'm trying to do is if we move them to another list, I don't want even if they are still part of the contact stage VM drop, I don't want them to. Um, I don't want you to trigger that that person to 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 send them another text message. So what we need to do is um, under the Apollo list, there's a code here. I'm trying to pull on my screen so you can see it. Um, this code here is what we need to do. And on in your particular, when you create your own list, you got to have a unique code. So when you copy this code here, we want to tell Make um, if they're in this code, do not. Do not if they, it, they 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 need to be part of that list in order for you to move it right. So what we want to do is we'll set up a filter, and we'll set up the filter here, and we're going to call it um, a voicemail, not not dropped right. So the VMS is not dropped, and if this uh, let's see what is it? It is called the it is the label ID. So if we go to label. Let's see. Let's minimize this. There's a lot of fields to go through. If we go to label, the label is actually a list and they call it labels. So if we go to label IDs, here it is right here. And it says, it says CB28. So if we go back to here, we will not see here CB28. Wait, actually, we're not here. We have the wrong list. Let's go to save list. Let's go to VM drop. Go here. Uh, here. So the VM drop, the list we need to, to change it to. Okay. Is here. This is the list here. It's uh, E zero C is the last numbers here. So E zero C. So if they are, um, if the label ID. Go back to label IDs. Find it. I'm blind. I have four eyes, but I need five eyes. If the label ID is equal to this, right? If the label ID is equal to this, then we allow to proceed. Okay. So we just basically telling them, oh, we could we could even we could even done the opposite. If the label ID, we could probably even do it the opposite. If the label ID is not equal to, I'm sorry. If the label ID is equal to. Yeah, that's why I'm confused, man, because they call it labels and it's actually a list. So it's, it's causing me a little bit of a it's, it's making my brain sweat. OK, so if the label ID is equal to this, then you're allowed to proceed. So if the label ID is equal to um, in this particular case, if it's equal to uh, what's listed, this This is the VM. So VM drop list, then you can proceed. OK. You know, a better, a better, a better, a better way of doing it actually is we want to say if the, if it's not equal to, let's say not equal to, 
if it's not equal to and we want to go to this other one that's actually a better a better way of doing it so let's go to um the list and we go to voice mode drop completed right and then we copy this right here that's the better way of doing it copy and then we're going to say if the vm if the list is not if the list is not in the drop list if the if the, if the prospect is not in the drop list then we should continue okay but if they are in the drop list we don't want to continue because we already dropped the voicemail so that's how we actually need to do it okay change my pen so it's not equal to it okay boom all right so that should that should do it <laughs> All right, so I, did I save it? Okay, perfect. So um, let's just run a scenario again. Again, I, I'm, 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 I have it going to my phone instead of going to the actual prospect because we're just testing right now. But then I, I, only thing that you want to change in this scenario is you want to you want to change this phone numbers. You want to change it to actually go to the actual prospect. Okay. All right, so we're gonna run a scenario again. Hopefully, it runs because Make is not giving us Make is not uh, cooperating with us today but um it should run for the same person because we didn't actually move them yet so let's hit save and let's run it okay so it pulled this is miranda and let's see let's let the scenario go so what it should do if it uh doing the research on miranda now and after it does the research then it's going to go create the v the voicemail script for anthropic with the vms with the vm script is created it's going to go to 11 labs and actually convert that script to audio once that's done once the audio is created it's going to drop it into voice uh dropbox once it's in dropbox it's going to then convert that audio file into a url i'll create it uh, lickable oh, what happened here timeout so let's just write it one more time again so yeah, Make has given us some problems today. A little overload with Make. All right, see, so ran a second time. All right, and let's see. Choice this one. Hopefully, it uh, actually pulled back some information. Okay, it did. Good. Oh look, it even pulled a GPA. Look at that. Let's 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 uh, take a look at uh, Miranda's GPA. Let's see how well she did in school. <laughs> All right, let's go to content. All right, she had a 3.1 GPA at Wichita State University. Um. It shows our backgrounds, some URLs, Anthropic. It created a response. It says uh, Amelie 24 7 closers. It created that message. Um, 11 Labs created the audio file and it did everything. And now it ran and it should have moved her. So, like, if we go back into uh, Apollo, let's see my screen here. If we go back into Apollo, and we go to uh, save list and we go to complete a drop. It should have moved Miranda over to this list. Should have is the operative word. <laughs> Let's see. Load it. Where did it go? Dropbox completed. Save the list. One. So it didn't move Miranda. Why not? Don't know. Let's see. Maybe I give it the wrong list name. Maybe I give it the wrong list name. Let's see. VM drop. VM drop completed. Oh, okay. Let's see. Let's go back here. What's the problem? Let's fix this. Let's fix this. Yeah, it moved to list. VM drop completed. So why isn't it in the list? Why isn't she in the list? All right. So maybe this didn't. Uh, let's go to, go to search and let's go to save lists. VM drop completed. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> It didn't, it didn't move it didn't move her to the the, the drop completed list uh let's see safe list vm drop completed ah uh, maybe it may take a few minutes 
but it's showing when we went to Miranda that she's in the VM job completed list. So let's go back to her. Let's go back and see. All right, so let's go back to the safe list. Let's go back to Miranda. Um, it's showing that it tagged her and added her to the list, but why is she actually in the list? Oh, it just took a while. It took a while to uh, actually complete. So it looked like she did actually eventually move to the list. I'm just moving too fast. Okay, so I'm not going crazy. I thought I was going crazy. All right. <laughs> All right, so you see it here for your own eyes. All right, so I don't look so, I don't look so cuckoo all right so miranda's here so it just took a while for it to actually propagate and for actually for it to actually move it took a few minutes but you can see it moved miranda over to this list so now she's in the um voicemail drop completed list and it showed that we dropped a voicemail um all right so if we go back to uh make and if we try to run the if we try to run it again in make um it should actually not pull anyone Right, because no one right now is on the list. So it the scenario it didn't it didn't go through because this failed. All right, we have nobody in the list that qualifies with these scenarios. Okay. And that's what we want. Because we want to be able to trigger this so that way when we go back to here and we go back to our save lists and we went back go back into the voicemail drop and then we select someone else on this list uh, that we want to send a voicemail to, uh, we'll just change this to um the voicemail drop and once we do it for megan it should run the scenario again all right this took long enough hopefully you found some value with this be sure to hit subscribe like share uh this video i look forward to it and i look forward to the next video and the next automation all right until next time peace hope this helps